Hey everybody, it's Colette Baron reed Welcome to this week's Oracle Card Guidance and Lesson. We are using the Seven Energies card deck and we're also doing a Seven Energies quiz. If you haven't taken it yet, oh boy, oh boy, you should. Um, Celtic Cross seems to be your favorite, so we're going to continue with this. Um, and I'm going to start with the first card. Now, let me explain this particular reading and why it works. So this is really a reading. It's kind of like a, I'm taking the temperature of the collective for the week ahead, right? So this is for what's going on in an energy that impacts all of us. Then tomorrow we do the Astro Oracle reading, and then you get a really detailed reading about yourself personally. So when you add the two together, you really get a good indication of kind of like what your next step is, what your purpose is this week, what your obstacles could be, etc. So let's start with the first card. Ooh, Divine Matrix. I'm going to actually read this from the guidebook. So the Divine Matrix is the first card that reflects all of us, and that means that something's going on in the energy. I'm going to read it because I think it's a beautiful place for us all to remember we're all starting here. Okay, so do you ever wonder how synchronicities come together? These meaningful coincidences move life forward in ways we might not understand at the time. We can get trapped in the idea that the world is a place of separate parts. I love this part. With space in between. Because the true quantum spiritual nature of reality can be really confusing. Imagine that everything possible under the sun is waiting to be claimed. You're not separate from what you desire to manifest. That's a, that's a key piece. You are not separate from what you desire to manifest. <laughs> Everything is intrinsically connected within a vast living web of life, the divine matrix. Even that which you have not yet observed as part of your life experience is still connected to you. It remains dormant until you choose it. Life operates on life's terms as well, both and, right? So both I co-create my reality, I create my reality in partnership with spirit, and I surrender to life on life's terms. You don't live in a vacuum. So you are surrounded by a multitude of realities that were brought to life by others. These can surely affect you if you allow them to, but as your thread, your luminous life force, your courageous dream, is part of the tapestry of life. You're being invited to be conscious of the pattern you are weaving. Very important. Isn't it amazing to know you have such power inherent in you just by being alive? You will see evidence of the truth of this divine matrix. It is in you. What you do matters. All manner of miracles are waiting for you to lay claim to them. Ready? Who wrote this? I did. <laughs> I'm telling you this card, I love it when we get this card as the main card. So now all the other cards are going to give us a little bit more information about this. Okay. So that the reason I read that, um, is because this is an important reminder that we are powerful co-creators in partnership with spirit. And at the same time, having to surrender to life on life's terms. Okay. So here we go. So this is the main card. What cross is this? So the next card tells me the nature of the obstacle that we may be looking at this week or the energy that helps us over any obstacle. Okay. So let's see what this is. Oh, healing the heart. That's beautiful. So we know this is a card that helps us over all obstacles. So, um, when healing the heart crosses divine matrix, it gives us a reminder that the burden and the baggage of our hurts, our resentments, our angers, our, you know, all the unmet desires and everything that we can add up as a story that tells us somehow that we are wounded, that becomes this big burden and prevents us from seeing ourselves in this incredible divine matrix. So it's requiring us to do some real healing this week, whether it be forgiving others, forgiving ourselves, or just giving ourselves a little bit of space to set healthy boundaries for ourselves and to take a minute to be grateful and to realize that in order for us to have an equitable world, we need to open our hearts to everyone as well. That brings in all the miracles. So everything is connected. Everyone is connected. So this is a beautiful week to take a minute and consider that. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's see what's at the foundation. 
Okay. Ooh, nice. Okay. So the foundation of this, this week, so usually I take a look at the foundation card to tell me, you know, is this foundation got some cracks in it? Is it solid? Can we be on it? And what I love this is this called a higher view. Um, I forgot to mention that the first card is from the connection to spirit, the seventh story, the card that crossed it was from the heart, which was the fourth. And this one is the sixth story, which relates to imagination and intuition. And it reminds us about the observer. When we are able to observe without taking the world personally, this is where all of this can make sense. So look at everything as every thread possible, weaving the world into, into being. And so when certain things come up, you don't want to feel like it's personal, personal, even the good things. It's like, it's, we're here on behalf of the divine. Everything is when we can see it that way and we can see ourselves with a little bit of distance and perspective. We don't take everything so it's about me. It's no, it's about we. So this is a beautiful perspective to take this week. So far, so good. I'm liking this week. Now let's find out what we've learned and what we're weaving into the patterns that we're, because remember the future is always implicit in the now. So let's look at what is our main lesson that we're bringing forward with us this week that we've already done. We've already know. Oh, a merry motive. This is great. And I think, I actually think last week, I'm not sure, Mark, do you, was, did, was it last week that we had Mary Motive? I don't know. I'm pretty sure Mary Motive was a mainstay of last week's reading about checking your motives. So interesting that that card is still that concept of checking our motives, really knowing ourselves better so that we recognize why we make the choices that we make. So it gives us a little bit more of an understanding of ourselves and less judgment, right? Less judgment. Now let's take a look at what crowns us, which is the highest. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Roots of abundance. So I always say that the highest card for me here is the card that represents, and the way I read the Celtic cross, all the help that comes to us from the unseen. So who's coming to our aid from the higher realms. And this is beautiful because this, this is actually bringing us down to earth. Uh, Roots of abundance is in the first energy about security. So our security doesn't come from our material world. And that's a reminder that our, our security actually comes from our attitudes, our beliefs, our, our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, and our willingness to be inspired by that which we cannot see. Um, also, the other thing is, is our currency is our experience. So this is really beautiful that it's saying, yeah, hey, there, all the guides and angels are saying, your guys are good. This is, you're learning to be new here. This is a week where you're really getting, getting grounded again and getting a sense that, wait a sec, we have hope. Whenever I see Roots of Abundance, it's uh, on the um, highest card. It's always about hope as well, that we can have tangible evidence that hope is real as well. So that's beautiful. Now what's coming around the corner? And that's, you know, really facing, I, I look at this too, this is a card of grief. So this is the energy center related to the heart, but it tells us that we're so much more because we've experienced all this pain. And there's no way you can say that you haven't suffered a little bit, at least during this difficult year, year and a half. And we're not out of the woods yet. So, but this is saying that there's great value in what happens to us when we suffer, when we witness the suffering of others, that we break open, right? Our hearts break open. And then there's more love for us to give more compassion, more, more understanding. So this is a, this is also part of this whole week that we have in here. And, uh, now let's take a look at the four events that all of us are looking at potentially experiencing this week. It's exciting. Did I say I love doing this? I love doing this. Ooh, nice. Okay. My husband told me I have to do it this way <laughs> or he'll come and make it different. It's good. Is this right, right, Mark? A little higher. A little higher. <laughs> okay. And then how's that? Okay, bring the third card down a bit. Now. Okay. <laughs> 
that's as good as it's going to get. All right. So a powerful move. This is great. So we see strategies in our favor this week, whether it be, um, vaccinations, not vaccinations, COVID lessening. Some things are very hopeful here and we're seeing evidence of it and we're making moves, right? So these are right actions that are required of us, but also that we're being invited to take, which is great. Great new information. Um, whenever the ears wide open cards sips besides this, and this is the uh, expression card. It asks us to listen, but it says that we're getting really good information. So information is revealed this week that makes us happy or makes us feel more hopeful Then great big love. I think because we do have hope this week, I'm really looking forward to find out what the heck happens. <laughs> This makes our hearts like, Ooh, we really feel the connection to community and to each other. And there's an invitation for that kind of love and, and to really love spirit, love the universe, love God, whatever, whatever your higher power is called, but also to really experience that spiritual love, but also that human love where we have so much compassion for each other and for the natural world. Um, and I think that that's, that's a beautiful, looks like this is a nice week of good news. I think, um, beyond the ordinary tells us as well too. I'm going to actually, this is, this is the spirit card at the end is that we can't possibly know the form. We have no clue how things are going to look. That's where hope can be tricky. So even though we have hope, the tangible evidence of that hope comes in the form that it's supposed to. It doesn't come in the form that we dictate. It has to. So I will be hopeful only if this happens, I will be hopeful only if that happens. See what I mean? So we have to trust that hope for its own sake. And for the fact that we know that nothing lasts forever and cycles change. And we're in a beautiful period of, of, of healing and regeneration right now. I think this is a beautiful reading that tells all of us this week to really kind of allow for the healing, get grounded and trusting that we're going to see evidence that more than hope is on its way. We just don't know the form. So we have to keep surrendering our need to know the form. All right. What a good week. I'm excited to see what the Astro Oracle card reading for tomorrow is going to be. Now, if you want to know, especially spring is coming. And if you want to know where you're in or out of alignment and it can change day to day. Um, but you might want to take our quiz. We've created this great quiz. You probably know that we did a, a big event last year around the seven energies and we're going to do it again. We want to really get you settled on where am I out of alignment so that you can put more love and attention to that part of you. So check out my quiz and I'm going to see you tomorrow. Hopefully. Take care. Hey, I hope you liked this video. If you do subscribe to my channel, click on the little bell and you'll get notifications when my videos are up. Leave me a comment. I love reading them. Don't forget to take that quiz. It is awesome. There's a link somewhere. I'm going to see you hopefully tomorrow when I do the Astro Oracle reading. Take care.